Hey there! Welcome to this episode of Canadian Retro Things. Now, those of you that follow my channel know that a while back I had an MC10 computer, TRS-80 MC10, that I uh, took apart and showed you what made it a little bit unique from the uh, other ones that are out there. And that's this computer right here. I showed you that there's an 8K modification done to the motherboard here. So rather than the stock 4K, this one has 8K. But the problem with it is that when you plug the 16K expansion pack into the back, it uh, causes interference. If you want to see exactly uh, what happens, you can check out the videos uh, up in the corner here or down in the description. So I had said that I wanted to keep this as is because it's a bit of a unique computer. But then, recently somebody made a comment in one of the videos. The comment was from High Tech World. You can fix the video problem by correcting a flaw in the RAM modification. Find the 74LS139 chip, which is piggybacked on U5. There should be wire from pin 15 of this chip running to pin 8 of U12. Remove this connection and tie pin 15 of the 74LS139 to ground instead. That should allow you to use the expansion pack without video interference. So I did my research on what would happen if I uh, did this little uh, fixing to the modification on the uh, MC10 motherboard there. And I came to the conclusion that one of two things will happen. Either this should fix the uh, interference problem or it'll cause a cascading event that'll completely destroy reality as we know it. But seriously, I looked into exactly what would happen with this alteration. It turns out that pin 8 on U12 sends either a high or low signal to pin 15 of the piggyback chip on U5. The changing of the input between high and low to pin 15 affects the outputs of pins 9, 10, 11, and 12. By disconnecting the wire and attaching it to the ground, you are fixing pin 15 to a low input. Doing the change to the modification shouldn't hurt anything. I guess we'll see if it's going to help. The first thing we're going to do is take the computer apart. The keyboard is removed and here are the chips in question. If you look, this is pin 15 here on U5. That's our wire that we want to remove. Running underneath to right here, which is pin 8 on U12. So we just got to desolder the wire from pin 8 there. Time to warm the soldering gun up. I've got the soldering iron warmed up, so it's time to give this a try. And the wire is taken off. Now we have to find a spot to ground it. I am thinking of grounding it over here. So let's give that a try. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I put a little blob of solder on this uh, ground pad right here that's uh, for grounding the RF shield on the back. We'll just attach the wire to that. There we go. So now we can 
put this back in the case temporarily and plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so I have uh, everything hooked up and ready to go here. Just have to turn the power on and pray for no magic smoke. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn the power on and check to see that the 8K memory is still working. If that works, plug in the 16K memory and see what happens. All right, power on. No smoke yet, good sign, good sign. Turn this power on. All right, everything seems to be working. Now, we'll print the memory. 7,238 free bytes, that means the 8K is still working. Now we'll turn this off, plug in the 16K and see if we're still getting the interference. All right, got the 16K expansion pack plugged in. So now let's turn that on, see if that's working. Nineteen thousand five hundred and twenty six free bytes. It's working. Okay, now we will try maybe loading that Pac-Man game in and see what happens. All right, we've got the Pac-Man game loaded. Just took one little adjustment on the volume wheel to uh, get it to work properly. And also, if you want to uh, see a little video about how and why I do the uh, transferring the um, sound files from my iPad to the tape, you can check that video out uh, down in the description, up in the corner of the screen here. But for now, I guess it's about time to try running Pac-Man to see if it works. Now, I'll just uh, cut to the old video that I did and show you what this Pac-Man looked like before. And unfortunately, none of these lines should be here. It should be showing you the names of all of the ghosts and everything else. And here we start it. And you can see the interference is way worse now. Okay, now we will try it again. And look at that, it works. I can now play Pac-Man. The sound works fine. Controls all work. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, get this old MC-10 up and running properly so it now works with the 16K expansion pack. Especially a big thank you to High Tech World for the suggestion of how to fix this. And uh, yeah, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, comment below. All of those things will definitely help my channel grow. I've got nothing left to do now except play a lot more games on my MC-10. Have a good day.